Okay, welcome back to Feinbos. Now we're going to look at our Erika lesson. Erika's are actually a, a short lesson because Erika's are such a huge family that it will, if I really have to go into detail, it will take us forever. So I'm just doing a short lesson just to give you the basics. Now, once again, I'm just going to share my screen. So you can also have a look at um, the lesson or you can get your own lesson in front of us. Um, and it says Erika's. Yay. So Erika's are usually the plants that we see the cutest little, sometimes like little bell flowers. Um, and they very brightly colored. So we often see them in the felt. Let's read what we say here. Erica's are described as bushes with small leaves and clusters of delicate flowers, either in the form of a tube, like the one down here, or in a cup. Now, I would rather say a bell shape, but they say cup, so we'll go with cup. Now, Erica's are so small that you usually have to zoom in quite a bit. For people like me, we have to put our goggles on and really go in to see what's going on there. Okay, but I'll use my glasses later. Now, let's first look at the leaves of the Erica. They say the leaves of the Erica are shaped to cope with dry summers. They have a waxy layer on top and the sides are curled backwards showing a small bit of the hairy layer on the underside. Leaves are shaped like this so that very little water is lost through the leaves. Now, how can a plant lose water through the leaves? I've got a leaf here. It's not from a Erica. It's a pelagonium leaf. It's nice and big, almost as big as my head. And I can shake this thing. There's no water coming out of it. Okay. But this lesson is saying that leaves of a plant, water is lost through it. Now, if I look at the underside of, the, of a leaf, this is the underside, this is the top. On this side of the leaf, so small that we can't see it, it's tiny little dots. They, if you put them under a microscope, they look like little lips, like this. And they can open up a bit and they can close a bit. Like when somebody sleeps, some people sleep with an open mouth and some with closed mouth. Yeah. Open or closed. Now, when it's very hot, they actually close their mouth because they are losing moisture. Moisture is little water droplets. They lose it through those little um, holes. So it's better to keep their mouth shut when it's hot because otherwise they lose too much and then they go all oh, floppy. Uh, but if we have nice cool weather, they can open their little, um, they call them stomata or sumata. They can open it and it can actually release some moisture. And as the wind blows, it takes moisture away. Now, here, if we think of summer in, on the Cape Peninsula, we think of it's hot. And it's very hot. Cape Point can be very hot. And it's very windy. When I'm out there too long, it feels like my skin is drying out because the, the hot air movement is sucking moisture from my skin. Then I have to come home and put some recovery cream on um, just to get moisture back in my skin. Now, the same with the plants. They don't have... Um, special creams to put on they have to protect themselves and they close these little mouth um, holes so that they don't lose the moisture because the warm air is moving all the time and it wants to suck the moisture from the plants now the leaves of the erica look at these tiny 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 little leaves if you've got a tiny little erica leaf right next to this one which one do you think will lose more moisture? This tiny little Erica leaf you won't even see. And this one is huge. So it's got a large surface to lose moisture from in the air. 
But the Erica plant is so clever. It keeps things tiny. And when things are tiny, they don't lose so much moisture. So that is the way that the Erica plants survive in this harsh summers that we have here down in the Cape. Um, they look very dainty little uh, plants with their tiny little flowers and their tiny little leaves and it's called thimbos, but they're extremely tough. They have to be, otherwise they not, won't survive our summers. And the Erica's are the toughest. So now we know that they lose moisture from the bottom, but they make their leaves small so they don't lose a lot. Now, once again, we're going to pretend that this is an Erica leaf. What it's magnified. So what Erica leaves do is to make the surface even smaller is they curl the leaves over like this. So it looks like this. What you see is a long, it looks like a rice grain, a long leaf, but it's actually curled over. So if you've got tiny little hands and you can actually pull it over, you will see there's the whole leaf. But by rolling over, it's protecting the underside where those little um, sumata um, holes are. And they're protecting them. You see, now the wind can't get to it and dry it out. There's another method, another one of the cool adaptations. Another thing, if you know if you, these leaves, if you feel them, they feel like velvet. And it, they're covered with tiny little hairs. I'll have to put my glasses on if I want to see this. Tiny, tiny little hairs all over. Even the stem has that. And that is also to protect them from losing too much moisture. So there's three things that we've talked about. They make themselves really small, as small as they can. They roll over backwards and then they've got hair underneath that protect them from losing too much moisture. Now here it says also they have a waxy layer on top. Now some of them, the top part of the leaf will be shiny and a very dark green where the, the underside will be light. Okay, this one is also dark on the side, light on the side because there's more hair here. Now some of them, the ericas have a waxy layer. And if you've, once again, if you've had tiny, tiny hands and tiny fingers and you can scratch on the, the surface of, you will actually get a little bit of wax coming off. And um, that wax is also to protect it. It also kinds of reflect the sun back. They say, oh, enough sun. Um, so it's all to protect the, the plant from losing moisture. The leaves we know have to make the food for the plant. So that we can see it's green, so it's got um, chlorophyll in it to make food for the plant, but it's also, it has to protect itself from losing moisture. Okay. Now it says here that we've got two different kinds of flowers. Here we see the bell-shaped flower, and here we see the long tubular flowers. Now, they are also designed for a specific reason. Let's go down and see what they say here. This is Erica's have physical adaptations to make best use of insects, birds, and even the wind to get pollinated. So now we know who's their friends. Insects, birds, huge friends, but also the wind. They use all three of those to get pollinated. Some will use insects, some will use birds, and some will use the wind. Now, if you're gonna use an insect for your pollination, you can be small, because there's a, a lot of tiny little bees and hohos all around, um, so you can have a small flower. If, you have to, if you're gonna use birds, our birds have got a lot of long beaks, you have to make it, it has to be a tiny bird if it wants to sit on an Erica plant because the plant's just going to go. Whoop. So these tiny birds that we have here are our little sunbirds and they barely touch the flower. They're so light and they put their beaks in the long tubular flower where they, they've got long tongues that go in and they can suck out the nectar. 
Now other flowers just uses the wind. So if there's lots of wind, let's just put out lots of flowers. I don't worry about insects. So I'm not going to worry about color. I'll just be white and I'll just use when the wind blows, I just shake my pollen out. So that's the three ways that Erica's actually use insects, birds and the wind to get pollinated. Okay, it says here Erica's are colorful plants. Yes, why are they colorful? To attract bees and insects. That is, bees and insects love color. They see uh, those colors and they zoom in on it. Some of them specific colors. And they go there for a reason. For food. Sweet nectar to help. And while they're there, they help pollinate the plant. So the, air, the plant calls the pollinators, the bees and the um, the birds to help them with something and in return they give them sweet nectar. Okay. Now it says here small cup shaped flowers are visited by bees, flies and wasps because they can actually fit in there. They crawl in through this little hole of the flower and then they're inside in this bell and they can move around and they get happy and they flap their wings and as they buzz their wings, the pollen actually goes all over their bodies. Now when they go from the one flower to the next, they are so full of pollen that they actually pollinate the flowers. All to, while just having fun, having a party with the sweet nectar. They say tubular flowers are specially designed so that sunbirds can reach inside with their long curved beaks. Now, I've, unfortunately, I've seen some sunbirds that's been knocked by a car. And when they, when they unfortunately now dead, the tongue hangs out of the beak. And it's a long tongue with a fork at the end, almost like a snake. And that's what they use to lick the lovely sweet nectar at the bottom of the flowers. So the tubular flowers are the ones that's going to call the birds closer or the the which other ones also have long tongues? Butterflies. So the butterflies and the birds are going to go to the tubular ones, while the other insects will go to the clock ones, the, the bell-shaped ones, where they can go inside and um, play around. Erica's also have flowers which are pollinated by wind. Yes, we know that. These little dull flowers, dull flowers, do you get it? white, no color, have large sticky stigmas that stick out of a flower. What is a sticky stigma? The stigma is like the mommy part of the plant. It hangs outside of the plant and it's very sticky. So if pollen blows past it, it catches it. It's like a sticky lollipop. If you hold it outside, while well, there's a dust storm, everything's going to stick to it. Now the stigma is just like a sticky lollipop that's hanging out of the flower and it catches the pollen out of the wind. So clever. You see they've all adapted to what is available to them here in the Cape. Bees, lots of insects, birds, um, lots of wind of course, and they use that wind. They use it. I've given you this lovely poem. We're going into a little bit of English now. And then we'll do some Afrikaans. <laughs> this poem is about an Erica plant. It's called the Erica Fairy. It says, come closer, my darling. Look, if you please. See the wild heather tresses toss in the breeze. Those red tufts and baubles and lots of loose threads are enough for the wind to weave natty dreads. Oh, what did I just say? Listen to that. There's so many clues in here. Come closer, my darling. Why do you have to get closer? Because Erica's are very tiny plants, tiny leaves, tiny. Come closer. Look. That is what the poet Anki Kroch wants to say here. She says, Come closer because these are small plants. See the wild heather. Heather is the word that the Europeans use for Erica's. 
Yeah, so that's pointing to the name Erica. Tresses, these beautiful flowers and the, the stems just tossing in the breeze. The breeze is a wind. There's almost always a wind here. Yeah? So of course she has to mention the wind and it's important for them. They use it. Those red tufts and baubles. I have no idea what the word bauble means. Maybe you know, I don't know. Baubles and lots of loose threads. I think those threads are referring to the long stems. Now all plants that live in a very windy area has to be very flexible. So when the wind blows, it has to be able to move with the wind. If you're gonna be stiff like this, stock stiff, that's Afrikaans lesson for today. Stock stiff means very stiff, like a tree. If you're gonna be stock stiff, that you might just break in a, in a very uh, strong wind. But all plants like your ericas, your protea bushes, your all the bushes can move in the wind. That is why she's talking about, um, it looks like threads because the branches can actually move. And here it says, are oh, enough for the wind, the wind again to weave natty dreads. These little flowers look like little dreadlocks. It looks like little fairy dreadlocks. Look at them, aren't they cuties? And they've got butterfly wings. And there's our little sunbird, wondering what's going on with the fairies. So I thought you would enjoy this poem, especially for you. Um, there's some many wonderful poems from Anki Kroch. Anki Kroch is actually an Afrikaans poet, but these were translated into English. The book is called Fain was Fairies. You will love it. Afrikaans and English. Okay. So thank you for sitting through my Erika lesson. Next time we're out there, we're going to look at Erikas and we're going to see all these wonderful things, how they've adapted themselves to be able to live here in this area. Let me take this out. Thank you, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Bye.